David Lane, welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're here to talk about the 50th anniversary of Tommy and uh, you put a, a band together with Tim Rogers and Ash Naller and a few other people and doing a couple of gigs. Um, yeah. Friday 21st at Memo, where we are now, and Saturday 22nd at the Yarraville Club. Yeah. Do you remember hearing Tommy for the first time? Actually, hearing The Who for the first time, I remember because it was probably the moment that changed my life. Um, my dad came home and he, uh, my dad came home with a copy of Who's Better, Who's Best. It was a 80s comp best, Who Best Of compilation. And he put the record on the record player and dropped the needle on the, uh, on the record. And the first song was My Generation. And I was like, what the fuck is that? That was, it was just like, it was just like everything, like, it was just like everything in, in, I was, must have been like six or seven years old or something, but it was just like everything made sense for the first time ever. And then um, once my dad uh, had realised that I, I was quite an avid with, with, with the, the, uh, the songs of The Who, he went and bought the uh, VHS video of The Kids All Right and brought that home and I watched that and um, hearing The Who coupled with seeing The Who, um, you know, just seeing Keith Moon and obviously and seeing Pete Townsend play with such like physicality and such ferocity and for me as like a really like shy, geeky, um, you know, like awkward kid I was, I, I, I thought that uh, once again, everything, like, everything started to, to, to fall into, into place. And I just thought, I want to do that. I think I want to do that. And it's just like, and even to this day, I, I, I find that like, you know, like it still rings true because I find I'm able to express myself musically and through songs in ways that I can't express to, to, people <laughs> I can't express in you know which is quite apparent here by my by my by my answers so what was it about Townsend and whistle and moon uh, that musical combo that that works so well um ah oh, it's just it's just like i think it's just un, unparalleled in its kind of like in its ferocity and it's just like it's just it was just like I just remember one of the things that like hit me about it was just like so unhinged but the songs were so focused at the same time. Once you get guys decided you were doing this Tommy project the, the Tommy gigs what's the starting point do you all go back and listen to the album? The start of yeah the start of Tommy um, yeah, well, I, I think for, you know, it's, some, it's, it's something that Tim and I have talked about for a long time because we, um, I think Tommy is a, is a record in its whole, in, the, in, in, its, um, in its original form as recorded by the band in 1969 um, and discounting the, the soundtrack to the film that came later on. Um, is a record that I know for, for Tim and I and for, I know especially for Brett who plays drums, who's playing drums with us, um, it's a record that's kind of in our DNA. I mean, it's a very, like, going back and so like, oh, I forgot there was that bit there. And, and that's, I guess that's why it's called a rock opera because there are little themes and little motifs that are always recurring in different spots and for different lengths of time. So in, in, that, in that regard, it's, it's, it's slightly tricky to, to, to learn, but for the most part, it's like, that, like so many of those songs are just just like drilled in here for, and have been for such a long time. Um, the original recording has a lot of uh, acoustic guitar on it. Mm. Um, I believe this show will be a bit more electric. Well, we kind of, I think the, uh, the, the idea behind it is to make it is to be true to the, 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 the record in terms of, I mean, there are certain things in, uh, on, on the record live which they weren't able to rec recreate, which we are able to recreate now with, um, 
extra extra singers and um, uh, keyboard and and um, and uh, Lee McGorry is playing flugelhorn. Um, he's able to recreate the Entwistle's brass parts that on the record, but um, so I think the idea of it is to be true to the record and still incorporate acoustic guitar. I think Tim's going to predominantly be playing acoustic, and I'll be um, I'll be playing the the Gibson SG guitar for for it. So we'll but I think there'll be a little bit of push and pull between you know being true to the record and with a little bit of the um, you know, a little bit of the live energy that the that they put into it when they played it live. So, do you go back and, uh, and you probably know anyway, but do you go back and look at uh, what Pete was playing at the time, pedal wise, amp wise? Um, yeah, well, I've 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 got I've got a Gibson SG. Uh, I've actually a Pete Townsend signature Gibson SG that I've had for about twenty years. So. And I have actually haven't picked that up in a long time, so it's actually come. I'm, I'm glad glad I didn't sell it. So, um, so I've kind of felt I've kind of fallen back in love with playing my SG again, learning learning the um, the Who stuff for these shows. Um, and I've had a high watt, which is his, which was his amp of choice from '69 through to I don't know through to '78 '79, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, like the, the, I think we there hasn't been we've kind of been going a little, you know, we've kind of been going deep in places. But um, I think it's funny when you listen to the and Tim made um, made note of it the other day, going back and listening to when the Who when the Who played it live, and there are these really intricate acoustic guitar parts on the record, and when they were playing it live, there was kind of a fair bit of kind of fudging and approximation going on with like Pete would kind of just improvise which which I guess like there 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 are chunks of the record which do sound like there, there's a song Undertour which goes for 11 minutes which a, a fair whack of that sounds like they're making it up on the spot but whilst we are trying to be true to that as well we are going to cut ourselves a little bit of slack when there are like, like these kind of meandering arrangements but like they're just just to kind of make it a little easier to compartmentalize I guess yeah. um, I imagine you, you have been rehearsing the whole thing so far and how's it been sounding and any tracks that are standing out as favorites for you uh, really yeah it's all it's all been coming together it's all been coming together really well um, oh. Things that stand out. I mean, for me, like I get goosebumps whenever I hear the first, you know, like five, six chords of Overture, like the first, like the very start of the record. That for me is just like a, oh, my heart um, moment. So that is really exciting to play. And uh, 1921 has been good. Cousin Kevin um, is really great fun to play. Um, despite its, you know, macabre subject matter. Um, well, most of the subject matter of the record is macabre, really. <laughs> and um, what else? Uh, Sensation is a really great song to play. And um, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's Sparks is, is really fun to play because that's one where we all get to, get to wriggle around a bit. Uh, will it be time to play other Who tracks, or is it just the the Who, uh, the Tommy? Uh, I think we'll probably, yeah, we'll, we'll, we are we are going to uh, supplant the uh, the the Tommy performance with an encore of extra Who songs that um, will be, you know, it'll be a um, I think it'll be a respectable mix of hits and a, with a couple of kind of little deep cut. Um, curveballs thrown in. Um, and you're always recording. Um, mm. I believe you have an EP ready to come out and an album on the cards. Yeah, yeah, I've got an EP which is coming out pretty soon actually. I recorded it about a year ago. Um, 
uh, at, oh, actually it was in London, um, just kind of waiting around there for no particular reason. And I uh, went into a studio called uh, Toe Rag, which is a really great studio in Hackney in London. And um, I, I, yeah, I just, I just thought rather than going to, um, going out to the pub for the afternoon and, you know, blowing a hundred quid on beer, I, I should maybe just spend a little more than that and spend a day in a studio and do something productive with my day. So I, um, uh, Toe Rag is a studio where like, a lot of records that I love have come out of there, like the Kaisers and Billy Childish and um, a lot of the Elephant by the White Stripes was done there. And uh, so I went and recorded an EP um, that's called uh, Affections Walking the Wires. It's about um, trials and tribulations of, of the heart. And um, that will be out soon. And I've got a record that I'm working on at the moment, which I'm kind of doing in bits and pieces. And I'm kind of collaborating with other, like some of my favourite artists that I've kind of reached out to, people that I've worked with before. And um, I always kind of balked at the idea of, of, of having guests on your record, because it's like, here, um, check out my uh, more, more famous, more popular friends to uh, help prop me up a little bit. But I just thought, well, fuck it. I really, I really like working with these people. I like, like, you know, I really like them as people. They tolerate me as a person, so <laughs> I thought, well, why not? Like, yeah, and so far, it's like we've got, I've got a couple of things on the boil which are pretty exciting. So, um, but yeah, and also work. Also, that'll be there'll be tunes of my own on there that have have been kind of really coming together. It's a real um, stylistically. It's 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 really you know there's rockabilly. There's folk, there's uh, elect electro pop, there's, you know, psychedelic music. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah, a real mixed bag, but it's, um, yeah, I think more than anything of it being like a cohesive kind of thing, it'll just be more of a compilation and document of a time and place in my life, I guess. Are you able to talk about the collaborations or are you rather uh, leave that to a later date? I probably, I pr uh, yeah, I, I probably won't until, <laughs> until, they, until I get their parts sent back and they're, they're on the song. Once they're mine, then I, I'll, um, I'll probably shout it from the rooftops, but I'll probably, probably shan't at this, at this nascent stage. <laughs> uh, tell me about some of the guitars that you've dragged out for the recording then. Oh yeah, I um, oh, what have I been using? I was talking before about about my Gibson SG. I've gotten that. I've just gotten a a, a Gretsch sixty one twenty, which is I've always wanted one of those. Being a big George Harrison fan, so um, I've been using that a lot actually. And um, what else have been? I mean, I've got like, I've got the Tele Tele Nocaster that I've, it's been my kind of go-to Tele for about ten years, and other other bits and pieces like a real cheap Chinese Rickenbacker copy, custom-made Rickenbacker copy that I got a couple of years ago, that I got in uh, I got the electronics re like, redone and put um, Lola pickups in it and it. It's it's one of the best guitars I've got, so that's kind of one of my go-to rhythm guitar. Um, apart from that, yeah, my Les Paul Gold Top. I've got a really great acoustic, which was um, built by a, a, a chap who um, works out of Moody Ponds. Is called Working Dog, and I wanted something along the kind of um, it's it's I don't know. It's kind of like a hybrid between a a Gibson and a, um, a and a Martin, but with a, a, a I love guitars with real chunky uh, baseball bat necks. A few years ago, I, I built a replica of Brian May's Brian Special with a friend of mine, and, and that has an incredibly thick neck. So since I started using that, I kind of 
if I go back to a thin neck, I feel like I've got kind of nothing to dig into, you know. So um, I've got this acoustic built with a really chunky neck and it, it, it sounds tip top. So uh, why should people come to these Tommy shows? Um, because you'll probably, you'll probably, um, it's the, probably the only chance you get to see something like this. And for us, it's like, it's, I mean, like it's, tribute shows are, are kind of a dime a dozen. Tommy is, well, whilst it's a, whilst it's a reasonably well-known record, it, it is a kind of fairly niche -y thing to do. And where, um, we just, uh, yeah, like, like it is a tribute show, but we're, we're, we're such massive fans of the record and the band ourselves that we're gonna give it the, uh, give it the kick up the bum that it, it, um, that it deserves. Uh, David Lane, thanks for your time. Thank you.